Welcome to Medicine in a Nutshell's Guide to Conducting a Respiratory Examination. Gain informed consent, wash your hands and take a thorough respiratory history. So, to gain the most out of your examination, you need to think of a few key things. 1. What is the differential diagnosis? 2. What are the clinical signs that you're looking for? 3. What are the complications of the disease? And what are the complications of the treatment of the disease that you can look for on examination? To demonstrate you understand the process of your examination, it's often wise to state what you are doing, what you expect to find, and then what you have found. This approach shows you're a thinker, rather than just repeating a list of conditions and signs which you've learned and aren't related to the case. A thorough examination is systematic and follows the steps of Inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Position the patient comfortably, lying at 45 degrees. Take time to look around the bed space, noting any items of interest, such as ambulatory oxygen, asthma inhalers, or peak flow meters. To gain the maximum from simple observational skills, Explore each item in detail. For example, don't stop when you've noticed there's oxygen. Go further, say the percentage and the mode of delivery of the oxygen, and suggest why a patient would need this mode of oxygen delivery. From the end of the bed, know the patient's comfort and if they look well. Now look for specific signs of respiratory health, such as cyanosis, use of accessory muscles, and tachypnea. Now think of their history. Do any of their medications cause systemic signs, such as long-term steroid use for COPD, causing thinning of the skin and central adiposity? Inspect both hands, looking for the signs of respiratory disease. Look for tar staining with a history of smoking. Now check for clubbing. If the patient is at risk of CO2 retention, Ask them to stretch their arms out. You're looking here for a CO2 flap. Now take a pulse. Note the rate, rhythm and character. It may be bounding in a patient with CO2 retention. Pneumonia is a cause for AF. Now count the respiratory rate. Do not tell the patient you're counting this as they may alter their breathing pattern. You may wish to pretend to take the pulse to avoid an awkward silence. Gently pull down the lower eyelid Inspect the conjunctiva for anemia. Look for the partial ptosis and meiosis of Horner syndrome. Inspect the mouth for signs of central cyanosis. Now, for the anterior chest. Inspect the chest closely. Look for any surgical scars or any signs of respiratory pathology. Think of the history. Are there any conditions which show signs that you'll see on the chest? Ask the patient to take a deep breath. Look for any asymmetrical movement of the chest wall. Palpation. Palpate the apex beat. This may be displaced in core pulmonale. Place your hands around the chest wall. As the patient breathes in and out, feel your thumbs move apart. You are assessing for symmetry and quality of movement. Palpate the trachea. Note if you are central or deviated. This may be uncomfortable, so warn the patient. Percussion. Place your left hand flat on the intercostal space. Use your wrist to generate power to tap the finger. Because the anterior chest wall for the upper lobes. Because the lateral walls for the middle lobe on the right and the lingular lobe on the left. Auscultation. Now auscultate the anterior chest wall. Ask the patient to take some deep breaths. Listen on the midclavicular line. Note, taking too many deep breaths can make the patient uncomfortable. Listen to the lateral chest wall. Listen supraclavicularly with the bell of the stethoscope, as shown. If you hear reduced breath sounds, and there is a dull percussion note, you may wish to test vocal fremitus. Place the stethoscope on the chest and ask the patient to say 99. 
Ask the patient to lean forwards and it's now time to repeat the technique on the posterior chest. Now palpate the lymph nodes. Ask the patient to look up so you can palpate under the chin. Palpate all the groups of lymph nodes. If a lump is felt, describe it. The location, size, shape, consistency and whether it's tender. Give your impression of what you feel the lump is. Posterior chest wall expansion. Repeat the technique by gripping the chest. See your thumbs move apart as the patient breathes in. Percussion. Percuss the chest wall, medial to the scapula. Feel for resonance, hyperresonance or dullness. Now auscultate the posterior chest. Auscultate down to both lung bases. Now try to combine your palpation, percussion and auscultation findings to understand the underlying pathology. For example, reduced breath sounds could be a number of diagnoses, but with hyperresonance on percussion and a deviated trachea, this is suggestive of a pneumothorax. If you detected mediastinal shift or signs of heart failure, check for pedal edema and a raised JVP. Thank the patient and allow them to get dressed. To complete your examination, ask for the bedside observations. You may also consider a peak flow. Now is time to present the case. For case presentation videos, please see our YouTube channel. If this video has been useful, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.